Last week, I started this initiative, if you'd like to call it that, at my church where I and a couple friends stood outside the church with a whiteboard to ask people questions and um, one of them played some music and we were just conversing with people and trying to share the gospel with them. So just general evangelism stuff. Uh, but we weren't actually going around talking to people. We were just there with the whiteboard. So I had this question on the board that said, um, are people born good? Yes, no, or it depends. And just a couple people put it depends, but it was actually split just about half and half between yes and no. And when they see the question, when they see that we're standing outside of a church, they can kind of already understand what our position is on it. So if someone isn't a Christian and they come up, then they kind of know what they're getting into at least, and we can have a good conversation. So there was this guy that came up, and though I think that there's no way anybody could find him anyway, I'm just going to change his name. Well, I'm going to say his name is Mark. His name wasn't Mark, but let's just say it was. So Mark comes up, and he says that people are born good. And I asked him, well, did you have to ever... Uh, teach your children how not to steal or how not to kick or anything like that, which happens with a lot of parents. And he had said that he was a parent. And he was like, no, my my daughters were pretty good. So there wasn't really the experiential thing for, uh, for him there. But we started talking and it shifted from the idea of people being born good or evil to morality in general. And that was kind of what I was aiming at with these conversations because whether people are born good or not, the Christians say that it's clear that we are sinners. Um, and so we say that we're evil. Other people say, well, no, we're not. And so it's a really good conversation to have between Christians and atheists. So this guy did say that he was an atheist. And we were talking about morality and where morality comes from and what the justification is for it. My position is that, yes, atheists can be moral. They can do moral things. But the only justification for morality is in some objective standard that's not based on your opinion or my opinion, and we call that standard God. Um, it goes a bit deeper than that, but that's the general idea. And he was saying, well, no, atheists can be moral, and not only that, they don't need God to tell them to be moral. And I'm glad that he didn't go here, but some atheists will say, they'll kind of mock Christians and say, oh, well, if you you need God to tell you not to be a murderer or something, man, you must not be a good person. Um, luckily, he didn't go there because that's kind of a um, personal attack. It's not really an argument. But um, Mark was saying that uh, he believed that he could be totally fine, uh, totally moral. He didn't need God to tell him that. So I ended up getting Mark to say something that was very telling, but he didn't really see it. So I was talking about how God is the standard of morality and how he's the justification for morality. But atheists wouldn't be able to, or atheists would be able to do things that are moral. They just can't justify them. And I actually said, uh, I, I referred back to Christopher Hitchens because he had said back in the day that there was this question he asked a bunch of um, religious people, whether they were Christians or Buddhists or Muslims or whatever, and he never got a good answer. I also have a wager that I put to the religious in these cases. I've tried it with everyone from the guy who founded Bush's faith-based initiative to various Baptist pastors, a Buddhist nun, a rabbi, a charismatic Catholic, not yet an answer from them. It's simple. You have to name or cite a moral action performed or a moral statement made by a believer that could not have been made by an atheist and it cannot be done. As I thought about it, I sat down and I went, hmm, how would I answer that? What would be a moral thing a Christian could do that an atheist can't do? And then it hit me. The most important moral thing that anybody can do, loving God. Like it doesn't occur to the atheist or even many Christians that were debating Christopher Hitchens, that loving God, the most important moral imperative of the universe is something an atheist cannot do. So the atheist is deprived of the highest moral imperative a Christian or a human is made for. That's a big deal. It's the one difference between someone who's an atheist and someone who's a theist. We, we say that God exists and that we need to honor him. And so therefore, that's the only moral thing that we can do that they can't. But it's also the most important moral thing. 
That's the entire difference. So I wish that Christopher Hitchens was still around to get answers to that question. Whether or not he would uh, acquiesce to them, I don't know. But anyway, I shared that with Mark, and it led into further conversation about morality. I'm not really sure that he accepted that, but he at least understood where I was coming from on it. And he was saying, we don't need God to tell us to be good. We don't need to look at God's law or anything like that to tell us to be good. We should just be good. We don't need this book to tell us. And I led him through a little bit of questioning to kind of get at where he was coming from with this. And I can't believe what he actually ended up saying. I asked him, okay, well, we don't need God's law, but here's what you seem to be saying. God is telling people, hey, you should do this, but we don't need that. So instead, we should just be good. But in saying that, Mark, you are doing the same thing God is doing. Because God said, you should do this. And you're saying, we don't need God. You should do this. God says, be good. You say, you be good. It's the same thing, just from a different perspective. And I said, it doesn't sound like you would be willing to follow God's law. But instead, this is essentially Mark's law. And he said, yes. And I can't believe that he said yes. He went, yeah, that sounds right. And he he totally did not get that I was in that scenario. I was replacing God with him. I was taking God off of his throne and putting Mark in his place because God first said, do good things. And Mark says, no, we can do. <laughs> Mark then said, no, we don't need him. I'm going to tell you to, to do good things. And he was like, yeah, that makes total sense. And he just didn't see that it is literally an example of him replacing God with himself. And that is the essence of actual Satanism. So Satanism is not worshiping the devil necessarily. Satanism is making yourself God because that's what Satan wanted to do. So you take after Satan, therefore it's Satanism. Um, doesn't have to have all the religious paraphernalia. It's like, I don't want God. I'm going to be my own God. That kind of thing. That's straight up Satanism. And he just didn't see it. It's, it was sitting there, not only right in front of his face, but he admitted to it. And yet, there didn't seem to be anything that clicked in his brain where he went, oh, wait, hold on a second. I'm doing the same thing that the devil said he would do in the Bible. So... He went away um, with a smile on his face, and we shook hands, and we had a good conversation. But man, he just didn't get it. And I hope that he does. Um, I'll be praying for him that he does. And I know that there's lots of other people out there that are like that. And I was actually once like that, but I'm not now. Um, and I hope that a lot more people can see, hopefully through this video, that when you say, I don't want to follow God's law, but we should just do good things, you're replacing God with yourself and making yourself the arbiter of what is good and are thus doing the exact same thing that Satan did all those years ago. So you probably shouldn't do the same thing that the embodiment of lies and evil does. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe check where your uh, morality is coming from and take a look at Christianity again. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time.